So Sony finally did it. They announced the Sony A1. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's that one camera guy back at it again with a initial impressions uh, video, just talking about this camera because it's been a long time coming. Uh, a camera that you know I've talked about. Jason Vong's talked about uh, as far as whatever this incarnation is, but it's finally here, and uh, it's Sony delivered it. I, I mean, obviously, I need to be able to test it out and use it, but on paper, based on you know, for example, the, whatever the A7S III's been able to do and the A9 that I've got here, I think Sony's got a killer camera. But it's one of those things where I don't think this is obviously the camera that you're going to run out to and purchase. I think the vast majority of people are not going to spend 6500 US dollars to pick this up. But what it tells you what Sony's capable of doing is phenomenal. I think that's the, the shining thing about uh, this whole situation in general is like, where is Sony going with uh, with all of this, which is really exciting. So, so we're going to look at some of the things uh, spec-wise on b and Photo here. And I just wanted to go ahead and take a look at it because, again, I've just caught wind of it. Uh, I knew there was some sort of announcement happening, but I just haven't haven't been had time really I just uh, I'm on my lunch break right now so let's take a look at this 50 megapixels 30 FPS that is the one that I was really excited about <laughs> I think in my assumption video uh, what I was hoping Sony would do I said 24 frames per second so that I could just match uh, you know, video speeds or whatever, and they just, they leapfrogged it by 10 frames. That's incredible. They just went up straight to 30 frames per second. So uh, now that being the new benchmark, I'm really hoping that you'll see that bleed into maybe an A7 IV. Uh, maybe they'll bump it up to 15, 16 FPS uh, for those that are looking out for an A7 IV. So that's really exciting. But man, 30 frames per second, they really just... Uh, they took whatever Canon was doing and then just like, you know what, we're going to drop an extra 10 frames per second. So that's exciting. The 50 megapixels on this camera, I mean, that's that's going to get you by for the next generation uh, of shooting for the time being. So 50 megapixels is, is a nice added benefit to it. The 8K video was expected. I think uh, 8K video had to happen with this particular model. Canon did it. Canon released their camera. The EOS R5. I I really like the EOS R5, by the way, uh, as I had a chance to test drive that camera. And I'm glad Sony went ahead and did this. But I think this is one of those things where they missed the mark on the Sony A9 Mark II. And I'm, I really am curious where they're going to go with that A9 series. Is there going to be a Mark III? What is, the, what is that A9 Mark III going to look like? Or have they just said, you know, we're just going to let it go. We're done with the with the A9 series. Let me know what your thoughts are on that or if you've heard something about it. But 8K 30p, 4K 120, this is killer, and especially 10-bit uh, video as well. So I'm assuming they're going to match the Sony the Sony A7S III as well. So I think they're going to be on that. Uh, as far as the EVF, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if the 240 FPS is brand new, um, whether the A7S III's had that, but it looks like that's new because I wouldn't have mentioned that if it wasn't important. Uh, I don't really take advantage of the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet. I'm not that kind of sports photographer. Uh, again, the 30 FPS is a big deal. The 16-bit raw output, that's going to be useful for people. This one, I'm, again, I'm not too keen whether that's been updated or upgraded from a previous model. The dual-drive mechanical shutter is something i got to look at. Is that 1 400th um, a second sync speed with, uh, with lights? I think that's going to be great. And then a dual CF Express Type A slash SD cards makes sense. I have one of those cards. Uh, well, I don't have it on my A7S III right now, but yeah, I think that's a smart move. I, I would imagine right now it doesn't make sense, right? Price wise, those CF Express Type A cards are really pricey. I wouldn't recommend anybody going out and buying them. Just go ahead and pick up your USS UHS two cards and go from there. But yeah, it would make sense in this particular model. So hopefully in the future, those prices drop. But I, I do, obviously, that was a, a no-brainer on their part. Uh, let's take a look at the specs stuff going on here. Again, what I really like is the mechanical shutter. I think the A9 Mark II was up to 10 FPS because that was a fault of the A9 
the mechanical shutter was very poor. It wasn't that great, but they're at 10 FPS. Okay, there's a lot of stuff I don't know, unfortunately. I'm still uh, trying to get cut up to speed here, but we're going to get 8K up to 420 10-bit. Man, that's incredible. Uh, wow. And then your typical the A7S III type style there. Let me know if you've heard whether or not the um, very it's going to simulate some of the uh, features of the A7S III in terms of video. Uh, I don't know, quite know off the top of my head. I haven't seen that personally. But everything else is what we're used to with Sony cameras. Obviously, for you that have used Sony cameras, everything's there. I think in one of the promotional videos, they mentioned something about handling heat. Because this is important. I saw uh, the video recording limit says un <laughs> unlimited recording. So we shall see if they can top the Canon side of things. I'm very curious to see what people's tests are going to look like and whether or not the camera shuts off or has issues recording prolonged AK video. So if they can uh, beat the Canon in that regards, I think that's uh, that's going to be pretty good for uh, for Sony there. Now, who is this camera for, ladies and gentlemen? It is, it is for the top uh, sports photographers. But the truth is, I mean, it's going to give you an edge for sure. I mean, I don't live in that world. I do shoot high school sports, but I don't shoot professional sports. But for those people, I think having an extra 10 FPS is going to be a deciding factor for some. I'm just wondering, I think maybe in some of the promotional, promotional content, they might have mentioned it, but I was wondering if they had different JPEG file sizes so that way for those uh, folks that are shooting in that particular industry, uh, they can get those files offloaded quickly because I think that's a big deal for them. But... Man, they uh, they definitely delivered on the specifications. Now, am I going to get one anytime soon? Now, I picked up the original A9 when it came out for like 4500 or so, 4300 whatever the price was. Absolutely loved the camera in terms of its features and what it delivered. But this Alpha 1, <laughs> I really like the moniker. They went <laughs> definitely uh, jumping on the Canon uh, Canon 1D series kind of thing, and I, I, I'm hesitant, but for sure I'd have to sell off a couple camera bodies. I kind of wish now that, if for me, it, it, the grand scheme of things, maybe not I picked up the A7S III or not even the A7R4, I would probably sell like an A7R4 and the A7S III and go with this one singular camera. Now, one thing I did notice, I don't know if it's a deal breaker for some, but it doesn't have the flip out screen like the A7S III though, so they didn't incorporate this aspect of it, which is kind of strange. I think they should have just did that already because it was something that they had. Unless in development wise, this camera, the Alpha One, was being developed in a different, you know, maybe they they were branching out in different directions. But I, it's it's interesting, you know, the the jump to the 8K stuff. I think. Potentially, the A7S III could have had that potential. Um, but again, you know how Sony works. They'll leave something for the next model to be out. So uh, what I'd like for, for some of you to chime in, if, if you could, what you think will happen to the A9 Mark III, uh, if you're in the market for that. I feel bad for people that might have just recently picked up an A9 Mark II. But granted, price-wise, this is on another level. You're definitely paying a higher premium for this. But... The jump from the A9 Mark II to this one is a significant upgrade the way I see it. But I like what they're going with. Could this have been just their A9 Mark III and kept it at the same price point at about 4500 or so? That leap in the price is a big jump. It is a it is a big jump. So I'm going to be interested to see what folks say about it. Obviously, I don't think I'm going to get any this camera anytime soon. I don't even know when exactly it's going uh, I can get my hands on one the chest out, but Sony's really going in an interesting direction. So, with regards to this and the A7 IV, I think I think we're going to see some bumps for the A7 IV folks that are waiting for that camera. Again, this is just one of those cameras you just look at and just admire uh, for the vast majority of people, and just hope that Sony's really smart about trickling down some of these feature sets to their A7 IV potentially. Because if they can even bring in some of these aspects to it, bump in the frames per second, 4K 60p, at least at this stage of the game, maybe with the 10-bit stuff, people will really appreciate that too. 
But uh, just let me know. What do you guys think? What are you seeing as far as the direction goes? Are you one of the people that are going to pick up this camera? You know, the joke right now for me is like, man, I got to start selling stuff if I'm going to pick this camera up. But, you know, COVID's really been a tough situation, I think, for everybody. For me, too, because I haven't had much to shoot or photograph because of the situation. And so for me, I'm not really in the market to get on board with this camera anytime soon. The probably the latest I'll even consider this camera is going to be somewhere in the fall. But more than likely, I, mean, I am going to see if I can get a rental out if it's available and, and I can find something to use it with. But I am. It's really good. I think it's exciting. I, I think this is a good answer for the EOS R5. Granted, price wise, it's up there. It's up there. But if you want the best, <laughs> they are up there. But this really uh, piques my interest too because obviously we know Canon has something up their sleeves as well. So I wonder if Canon's uh, EOS R1 series is going to be uh, kind of broaching this particular uh, arena as well. So um, the camera of war, the camera fighting is, is very exciting. Uh, again, as I yap on it <laughs> about it, this camera is very, very appealing. But obviously we're all just going to wait and hope for the a7 IV uh, for the vast majority of people. That's going to do it for me in this video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like, get subscribed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.